Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Sky coming on to talk to you about um, a really interesting transit that we're having uh, here during late April and uh, moving into early May 2024. It is the uh, motions that Mars is making transiting between uh, Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. Um, it was with Saturn around the time of the solar eclipse earlier in April and it has ever since then been transiting uh, towards Neptune. Um, and this has been a really interesting and perhaps frustrating transit that I felt the need to come on and talk about because I think that there could be a lot of um, kind of like subtle motivations that a lot of us might not realize um, are brewing beneath the surface and we need to really uh, think about that. Um, so in this video, I want to talk about that and I'm going to also give some post-eclipse insights as well, how I feel things are kind of like transforming now on the other side of that. And we'll talk about uh, trying to channel this uh, Mars energy a little bit more deliberately and healthily. Um, so yes, um, the exact time of this transit, uh, mainly between April 25th and May 1st, will be when we have uh, Mars moving right around the uh, degree that Neptune is at, at 28 degrees Pisces. Uh, though I think that this will echo through the first half of May and uh, be something that strongly influences the transition of Jupiter from Taurus into Gemini as well, which we also have in May. Uh, do subscribe below if you want uh, to get notified when the May Comprehensive Astrology comes out, and we'll talk more about um, Jupiter at long last changing signs into Gemini, which I am looking forward to personally. Um, okay, so where do we stand right now with these current transits? Um, I feel that... Okay, uh, there has to be some type of routine to offset the mental overload that a lot of people are facing right now. I feel that Neptune is very active, and I feel that um, there's a very deep and vast landscape or paradigm to the different connecting points that people are working through right now. What I mean by this is um, so many different little goals, so many different little significances, so many different... Um, maybe location contexts or area contexts, so many different unsure or undefined relationships. Um, we are seeing such a severe Mars transit right now because uh, many of us perhaps have struggled, refused, or just not felt that it was the proper time uh, to define things very uh, specifically. So um, we're definitely dealing with the undefined, unlabeled, uncategorized elements uh, right now during this time. As well as we've come past this eclipse, which is which was an Aries eclipse, right? Also in the Mars ruled sign of Aries, which was resetting the board for a lot of people and really pointing out what's not working anymore, what we don't need to keep pushing for anymore, and starting to open up some new space um, to generate some new goals or create some new ideas of how we want to move forward with better leverage, with more um, for some people like institutional power, uh, for some people also just more detachment from that mainstream and more individualism. Um, not to say that any of these things are necessarily uh, the right or wrong choice. Uh, there's kind of a feeling of eventually needing to jump in. Okay, so I kept getting symbolism as I was meditating on this time of like um, people wanting to jump into the next story, like wanting to like really uh, get into the water per se and swim. But some people are kind of hesitant to do it. It's kind of like learning to swim or learning to um, navigate some type of different terrain that people feel hesitation with. It's like, okay, I know that I need to do this. I know that I need to learn how to do this, but I am perhaps hesitant again to just jump into it. Well, um, it's possible during this time that you just have to jump into something. It's possible here, um, especially moving towards June. Okay, like late May, early June, once we get into Jupiter and Gemini and this uh, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus breaks up, which is really fixing and making rigid a certain routine cycle or uh, life matrix. Uh, once that breaks up, there's going to be a need to jump into something. So some of us are going to have to just accept that um, something is outlived or something has basically um, come to the conclusion perhaps a long time ago, and um, we're going to have to learn some new skills. Okay, so um, this is not meant to be a Jupiter and Gemini video, but I'm already getting a lot of insights in that based on this Mars-Neptune conjunction in Pisces, which right is also a mutable sign. So it's bringing, it's kind of foreshadowing that a little bit with a major dose of mutable energy that we've been having um, ever since the eclipse. <sighs> yeah, um, we have to learn new skills, you all. Like I'm feeling so many people are too um, hesitant. They're too perhaps 
not satisfied because I don't feel a lot of satisfaction right now. I'm seeing a lot of people accepting things, but not necessarily being satisfied with them. Uh, we're going to have to develop new skills and new techniques. And essentially, we have to get better with the understanding that life goes on and that we can't necessarily predict or totally stage or pre-plan things perfectly. Um, I'm also feeling a lashing out happening for a lot of people. Whenever we have Mars and Neptune conjunct, this does speak of a deep temper or um, an inchoate rage. This speaks of a need to be so far along on a certain track. This speaks of uh, sometimes also people, uh, say for example, you've been uh, taking like a college course or something, and maybe you've been like quite lazy or have procrastinated things for like three quarters of the semester, and it's like about to end, you feel like you're about to fail that class, and all of a sudden you want to like shift into action and like get it all right and like do all the work at the last second, And um, but perhaps it's too late or perhaps um, we should just cut our losses is another thing that comes up with Mars Neptune. And it's a very important lesson here that uh, teaches us like, okay, if you're going to engage something, if you're going to do something, we need to try to do it right from the beginning and not procrastinate so that we don't put ourselves in these positions anymore. So definitely take stock as you're moving into this time, like what unfair positions have I put myself in? Um, where am I engaging something half-heartedly? Um, and also what um, urges have I had to experience something new, to jump into something new? And how is this all kind of generating perhaps a half in and half out or gray zone kind of reality because there's a lack of commitment on either side? This transit is going to start to solve this, but depending on how attached we are to predictability, depending on how attached we are to pre-planning or pre-understanding a certain chain of events, this could all dictate how, um, I want to say, not just easy or hard, but um, fun or not fun the next situation is. Because uh, when Jupiter goes into Gemini in late May, about a month from now, and we get into June, um, we have to sometimes be willing to take losses. We have to sometimes be willing to hit a dead end sometimes and turn around, or we have to um, also maybe like rewire a little bit. Like I do feel like there's a rewiring happening um, that actually started when Mars hit Saturn and then it's uh, transit transited up to Neptune and then it's going to move on into Aries. It's going to hit the eclipse points. We've had the Mercury retrograde on that Aries eclipse. Mars and Mercury are both going to go over to, of course, Venus, um, inner planets. Uh, Chiron, of course, is right around there too. So there's a lot of activity happening right now in the Pisces, Aries, Taurus, realm and Gemini soon as well. Um, so it's meant to be a time of the fool, okay? Um, Saturn in Pisces doesn't want it for us, but um, there's got to be some element of our journey that we're not necessarily expert at. So we have this maturation happening indicated by the uh, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces transits we've had over these last few years. But there's also a part of us that I feel is really yearning to experience something it's never experienced before. And I will say, I'm just feeling psychically right now, that perhaps some of those old dreams that you've had or some of those old visions that you've had of yourself or your uh, goals or motivations, these can actually be done properly right now too because you have alchemy here. You have the old mature and you have the youthful, <laughs> foolish energy as well, um, which can either be frustrating or like world creating. You know what I mean? It's like the positive and the negative, the masculine and the feminine, the elderly and the youthful. You need these polarities in order to create. So what we do have here is a really vast creative energy that you can hone if you want, but it really requires at least placing aside, if not detaching from these ingrained egos from the 2020 triple Capricorn time. We have certain like very mature powerful, status-oriented, ingrained egos that are very much, I would almost say, at least restraining, constraining, if not even in some cases almost imprisoning certain people into walls, okay, or into um, houses or, or ideas about finance or materialism, especially with Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus as well. 
And some people have created a lot of personal regulation and a lot of personal withholding strategies, which are protective, but also imbalanced or in shadow lead to a lot of stagnation, lead to a lot of plateau. And there's a certain point in time that, for example, you know, the money in the bank or the ownership construct outlives the individual as well, or it's not even, you know, it's inanimate, it's blind in a way. Um, so perhaps a lot of people are taking catharsis in giving vision or steering these blind economic constructs or these blind status constructs. But this very, very quickly can become, I'm not going to say evil, evil is not the right word, but it gets there. If people are starting to sacrifice their own vitality or sacrificing their own opportunity to be at the helm of something that is blind. Um, so blind steering, okay, is just something that I'm getting randomly with the Mars-Neptune conjunction in Pisces, especially at this late degree. Um, there's a desensitization, perhaps. There's also a, I've always wanted to feel that. I've always wanted to experience that pleasure or that sensation. And I'm so old and I feel so plateaued or stagnated that I'm just going to force it to happen now. Beware of force. Always with Mars, Neptune, or Mars, Saturn, and we've had both of these transits. Very easy to sustain some type of injury through force. Very easy to overdo it at the gym. To um, also stretch something too much or uh, flexibility is kind of inhibited with Saturn and Pisces. Um, so also with Mars and Neptune, it's like maybe we realize there's a rigidity or we realize that something is not moving the way that it used to and maybe we try to force it to like prove something to ourselves or the ego is like attached to something being flexible or attached to something being even like possible. And um, you see back in uh, Saturn and Aquarius, um, before Saturn was in Pisces, we had a very interesting kind of like poetic experience for like personal force and like being like a force of nature or, you know, like stepping out and like demonstrating our like skills and techniques. Um, that becomes much more poetic and much more um, internalized during Saturn and Pisces. So if you kind of like try to step into the same force that was like open to us back in 2021 and two, it's not going to work now. I don't know if you've noticed this, but about ever since the time we hit, um, honestly, this time last year in 2023, we moved into a paradigm where like force and pushiness or um, extreme attachment to a very specific result or willpower, all of that stuff kind of um, reduced just ever so slightly and now it's declined even more and it's more now about long-running momentums it's more about the dreams you've had for a long time and kind of flirting more with those or taking a softer hand soft power instead of hard power and you see it's the world's not caught up to it and you kind of see the paradigm shifting at the collective level as we're also in a very like militant time and we're in a time where you're seeing people try to use that hard power or try to use that sort of like feeling of like absolute authority or legalism and um it's kind of like a holdover or a or an echo of the last few years but now the people who are really getting ahead or the people who are really making progress they're using a softer hand they're using um also unknown unspoken skills or things that they've learned from their ancestors, uh, things that aren't like available on YouTube tutorials, things that aren't um, answered by the Google search. Uh, so there's a lot of like inchoate wisdom as well, not just inchoate rage, but inchoate wisdom. I love this term. Yeah, inchoate wisdom. So this is where the gut feelings are everything for us. This is where... Um, we already know the answer before we engage. And it's also a time where, yes, we do make choices that over a long period of time are going to be a huge difference for us, but maybe we don't see it right this second. It's like the little actions that you're taking every day build a major result. You don't force the major result, you know, in one day and see the result then. So anything of like building muscle or building finance or building building something incredible okay rome was not built in a day okay um and neither is excellence and neither is um huge uh powerful and self-actualized results these don't happen 
in one day. And I also feel with Mars and Neptune that people want to force it. Okay, this is like, it's a very debilitated conjunction, right? Mars and Neptune together and Mars and Saturn together. They, Mars does not like either of these outer planets. So you have a lot of people having like these last second desperate uh, tangents, okay? Where it's like, um, I have always wanted to do this and now I realize that like the time is running short and now I'm going to try to force it to happen even though it's unlikely that this situation can happen quickly. Um, this can definitely look, definitely look like people using that last little bit of money to try to start a business, okay? Like impoverishing themselves to start a business, you know, impoverishing themselves to buy a house they can't afford, essentially becoming like house poor. Um, people also clinging on to the last bit of youth that, that, they, that they feel. So you can see someone who's like nearing retirement age, living out the life of like a teenager or young adult. Um, out of a fear of lack or a fear of loss. And this is like not about critiquing that. This is not about um, feeling any type of superiority to this type of desperation. But it's definitely about kind of like learning and fostering this feeling of inchoate wisdom where you kind of understand how the world works and you understand how physics work and you understand that creating intricate systems or creating powerful, self-actualized elements of our lives, these things can't be rushed, forced, or done haphazardly. It requires a very methodical and diligent, repetitive, cyclic approach. So this is a wonderful invitation for any of you who have these like big dreams or big goals to take it back a notch, actually, and to stretch it out, give yourself more time. Time is the main benefactor during this time, okay? Um, while we're still in Saturn and Neptune and Pisces, this is where we make these long-term decisions. This is where we um, do the really long-term programs, long-term building processes uh, so that we can eventually really wield this feeling of self-actualization, but um, don't force it. So beware of force. Um, obtainable goals, okay, through daily habits. Also, I feel that there is a severing happening during this time. I feel that there are certain relationships that are cutting here. I feel that um, perhaps some people have been in somewhat of an illusion or somewhat of a over mind oriented time where it's like they're thinking about what this relationship could be. They're thinking about what this business could be, but it's not real yet. It hasn't happened yet. And basically, if you have anything in your life like this, like it's great to dream, right? Dreaming is great, but I feel that it could be in shadow during this time as well with Saturn and Neptune and Pisces and then Mars transiting through. This can be like... Uh, you know, for example, people have a talent or something. They're like, I'm going to make it big in the music industry. But by being too forceful or rushing too much, they might end up with like, you know, um, a record label or something that takes advantage of them. Or they might end up having to like sing someone else's songs that are not really their style. But nonetheless, they could like accomplish it. But it's like not the integrity of it for them is perhaps not going to add up in the end. Um, so also, if you have anything like that in your life where you're realizing, okay, I'm like living someone else's dream or through being in any way desperate or rushing too much, I have kind of like confused the integrity of my self-actualization process. Uh, this could actually be set right in your own mind and you could actually start to adjust here or reposition or reproportion over the next medium term time, you know, like maybe two to four years into like what is actually right for you. Um, so that's a very powerful thing. It can feel discouraging. So you want to kind of like face any discouragement that you might have here or any like um, delaying, okay, delayed gratification with Mars, Saturn, Mars, Neptune, and Pisces, uh, delayed dreams, delayed gratification, um, the path being longer than you expected, the goal taking longer than we expected to reach. All of that is likely here and we just can't lash out at ourselves. We can't get... Because, you know, Mars has no chance against Saturn or Neptune, right? Like, Saturn and Neptune went out um, because of how vast and structural, of how vast Neptune is and how structural Saturn is. Um, Mars can't necessarily um, overpower that. But it can certainly annoy it or create a lot of havoc. And that's what we want to try to um, not resort to here. Um, anyway, everyone... Try to here become a good swimmer. Try to face yourself with patience and just watch out for any tempers, any um, rash decision making, any impulsiveness. Okay, that's a big thing right now too. And um, because I, I also Jupiter, Uranus, and Taurus bad for impulses. 
Mars, Saturn, Mars, Neptune, bad for impulses. Um, it just is probably not going to um, yield what you think. But that also um, educates and it informs more like the actual uh, nature of what you're working with, uh, which ultimately leads to, um, you know, valuing your own time more and not feeling like you need to like put yourself on the line for people. I feel that there's a lot of that as well. Um, people have perhaps too easily expressed their goals or to have too easily expressed their dreams and um, maybe they need to be protected more here as well. Um, and finally, everyone, um, do also observe rigidity in your life. Okay, so like less flexible body, right? Saturn, Mars, Neptune, and Pisces. Um, maybe stretching here, maybe working on having a more flexible mindset as well, not rushing yourself, being more in a flow uh, here will uh, do everything. Uh, so anyway, everyone, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, enjoy this transit. Much love. Bye.